We have, uh, is a, uh, David Murphy here? He's down the hall. He's down the hall. How about Ryan Black? I'm not sure. He may have left. He was on the broken back. Thank you. Um, how about um, Anthony Zool? Again, Mr. Zor, to House Education. Thank you. And Cleo, I think it's Cleo, Cleo Bacon will be on deck. So the uh, written testimony I just submitted is pretty much the same as the, the last bills. I think they're, they look fundamentally the same question, different ways of addressing the issue um, in a similar fashion. Uh, I don't want to talk about the disparity of force that I talked about before because for the most part, the same people that were in the same room, I think. Uh, I do want to talk about the fact that response time is the number one thing that lowers victim counts. And the response time, the average response time, this is again in the, the written submission I just gave, um, the average response time by police is 18 minutes. That's according to the National Sheriff's Association. So when you're talking about a difference of 18 minutes and literally seconds, we're talking about a lot of victims, especially since according to that same source, the average shooting lasts 12 and a half minutes. Cops cannot protect us in 12 and a half minutes if they're across town speeding down the highway. And I regret that this is necessary, but this is simply a reality. And when we're looking at this, even the, the person who submitted the bill, I've been sitting through all these comments, the person that submitted the bill agreed this law probably will not stop anybody who's committed to a school shooting. It's not going to stop them. So what we're talking about is fear. Fear of legislating. Fear making the law prohibit people from defending themselves. And when fear wants to legislate, fear is going to pass bad law. It's happened time and time again, historically. It's just not a good thing to listen to. We have to look at the common sense. So if there isn't a need for someone like me or any of the parents or teachers to carry, then there isn't a need for the law because there's no threat. If there is a need for this law, then there's a need to carry because there is a threat and we have a right to defend ourselves. That's simply the fact of the matter. Our rights exist specifically for these types of cases. Because you don't pass a right to free speech when everybody likes what somebody's saying or likes the habit that they're doing. You pass that type of thing because these things are controversial and because these things are going to bring up these types of issues. That's why we have a social contract. And if we're going to move together as a society and agree that we're no longer going to allow individuals to defend themselves with guns at schools, that type of social contract change needs to be a constitutional amendment. And when we see the division and the partisanship that's happening today, it's because of the drastic changes that are being proposed on every level of government, on every issue, without that type of social debate. And I just want everybody to think about that, how we need to move together as a society, not push laws through in winner-take-all policies. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Brock. Any questions of the presenter? Thanks so much. Now I've got one. You know, one of the things I've learned today, as I look at these cards, I, and I'm not picking on this person, but I'm saying to myself, the next time I do these cards, I'm going to make darn sure that my printing is very clear. <laughs> so, so bear with me. Here. The last name I believe is Bacon. I, 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 I'm sorry. Is it, is it Clyde? Clyde. I'm sorry, Clyde, I didn't mean to pick on you, my friend. You but know, it, it's fair. If, uh, if my name was still in Greek, it would be if Kaleidos Bottles. Okay. <laughs> so, way I went. So, welcome to House Education. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I appreciated your 
comment when we were going to lunch. And I noticed that none of the paid heads uh, volunteered to give up their time. So it shows that time is money. And I will be brief because my wife said, don't speak. However, <laughs> in listening to what was going on, I'd like to react. Um, I grew up in Massachusetts, so forgive me for that one. But I spent 11 years in Newbury. I spent 12 years in a motorhome with my wife and two dogs, and we didn't kill each other, and we had weapons. <laughs> I believe in guns. I had a gun. I was an 11 year Air Force pilot flying planes with big guns. There are appropriate places and appropriate times for all kinds of weapons. There's also the demands for training. Some of the folks here have talked about training. It's one thing to shoot a target, it's another thing to shoot a person. It's the adrenaline rush to react to what's going on around you. All of that training takes time. Um, I have an interesting story I won't go into about 9-11 and the lack of using trained people. Instead, we created the TCA. But, TCA, are, excuse me. Okay. Well, the airport people. Okay. Yes. 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 The TSA. Most of what went on in the reaction to that was window dressing to sell tickets, not safety. We had 80% of the commercial pilots military trained and ready. But it took two years to have us all go through police training at our own time, on our own money. But as far as your position, I hope that the school system will actually bring history back into the curriculums so that people understand the Constitution. I had the honor to walk with the kids in their protest march a year or so ago, and I was very impressed. And I want to salute the teachers that made such an impression. The, the uh, young folks that get up and spoke were tremendous. Uh, so contact and home upbringing was terrific. When I'm listening to some of the professional comments, and this I want to throw at you, which you've not heard, I'm sure. And that is, as a kid going to school, and then listening to my kids who went to school 20-something years later, and God forgive me from the teachers' union, Mrs. Featherstone, my seventh grade music teacher, one, asked me never to sing in her classroom again, and two, had a bottle of vodka in her bottom drawer. Some of the folks talking about uh, drug-free schools doesn't matter because they still get in there. Well, if we have drugs and if we have alcohol with kids that are doing it and they're carrying it, we will have accidents. Pilots are trained to look for what could happen be prepared to take steps. So listening to today, those defending the present state of affairs are looking at the fact, or not catching the fact that an accident's going to happen. And not everybody in the school should have a gun. And who knows when parents are going to a sports event or to a dance, and they've already had a couple drinks at home, whether they're going to be as cognizant as they should be. So I think we should have done free schools. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bacon. Are there questions of the presenter? Madam Chair, thank you very much. I'd like to call uh, Blake Kemp. Is Blake Kemp here?